Now, as applicable to marine structures or offshore structures, let us talk about an important point called realization of wind forces on offshore structures. I mean to some extent we can even say this as marine structures also it is applicable to coastal structures as well. You can even say this. We have learnt about earthquakes as important source in terms of environmental loads. You know wind induced vibrations are actually dominant in flexible structures. As far as offshore structures are concerned, they are very important in compliance structures, floating structures etcetera. Just for comparison earthquakes, just for comparison earthquakes are dominant in fixed structures or stiff structures. Most bothering feature is that wind and wave are actually good friends. Why? Because they generally act together. So, let us understand few terminologies. We know V is now going to be V star plus V of t. The second issue is it has got two components the mean component and the gust component. We also understand that wind produces low frequency excitation. The third component which is very important the third point is the gust component is generally modeled probabilistically. The fourth point which is important is drag force on the members will be due to wind and wave. Waves also create inertia force, earthquakes create only inertia force no drag. Therefore, vibrations caused by wind and waves are different from that caused by earthquakes. The good news is that for design purposes most of the codes consider wind as quasi static process. But we should remember an important point slender structures are wind prone. So, flexible structures you can say are wind sensitive. Suppose if we want to consider wind as dynamic process not as a quasi static process consider wind as a dynamic process then following parameters are important 1 length of the record we can also call this as record length. So, record should be continuous there is one option you can also make intermittent and record, but sufficiently for long time. Sometimes they are also measured depending upon the choice that is when the wind speed exceeds a particular let us say threshold 
value only then you record. So, recording has got different options it can be continuous, it can be intermittent and constant interval let us say every 10 seconds every 1 minute you can record you can also do it by choice that you keep on measuring when the wind speed exceeds the threshold value you record otherwise you do not record. If you have a record continuous if the record is continuous then you take an average it is considered for the design. Let us say that average is V 1 if the record is intermittent end, let us say the velocity is for V 2 it is seen that V 2 is generally greater than V 1 because longer the record average will be lower ok. Second is the average time average time is the time at which the record is averaged. The third factor is the input so wind spectrum it is an important input for analysis actually this defines the fluctuating component of the wind load. The fourth one could be something called cross spectrum. Cross spectrum is actually to indicate the spatial dependence of wind velocity along height, along x and along y. It becomes a three dimensional variation it is difficult to handle. So, this is compromised in analysis by using aerodynamic admittance function. There are two reasons why aerodynamic admittance function is being used. One reason is it is to bypass the rigorous random vibration theory. Second, AAF can be obtained experimentally with better accuracy. So, it can be easily quantified. So, aerodynamic administration function is better quantified. So, we know that the total load because of wind is going to be half rho C d A V square which can be half rho C d A V bar plus V of t square which can be expanded as half rho C d A V bar square plus V of t square plus 2 V bar V of t. <coughs> we also know that from the literature that V bar is much greater than V of t. We can also neglect V t square. So, doing that we can now say F w of t is half rho C d a v bar square plus 2 v bar v of t which can be as said as half rho c d a v bar square plus rho c d a v bar v of t. So, we call this component as steady mean drag force we call this component as fluctuating zero mean force. Now, this can be expressed as steady drag component mean component plus rho C d A V bar V. 
we call this as F G of T. So, G stands for gust. Considering wind as an ergodic process, considering wind as ergodic process, the one sided power spectral density function of wind process F w of t is related to wind spectrum as follows is given by rho c d a v bar square s u omega we call z equation number 6. We can now say I replace the gas component with aerodynamic admittance function I can say the spectrum is now given by 4 f bar square by v bar square of aerodynamic admittance function of s u omega call the equation number 7. Now, typical aerodynamic admittance function is a chi function of omega root of a by 2 pi v bar square. Okay. So, the typical plot of this looks like this for increase in omega the chi function of omega will vary. So, this becomes 1 and this is 0. So, on the other hand when omega root a by 2 pi v bar tends to 1 at lower frequency at lower frequency chi function of tends to 0 at higher frequency that is when omega root a by 2 pi v bar tends to infinity the chi function of omega root a by 2 pi v bar tends to 0. In general as given by Davenport in 1977 chi of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus 2 x to the power 4 by 3. So, friends in this lecture we started understanding aerodynamic load that is wind load caused by wind. We learned something about the wind process factors affecting wind load the drag force and the lift force then wind velocity has got two components the mean and the gust component then aerodynamic admittance function which approximates the gust component which we plotted and understood. So, in the next lecture we will talk about the wind spectrum and try to learn how the wind spectrum equations can be plotted using a numerical code or a MATLAB code. We will do couple of problems to understand how they can be computed by simple hand computations and one can also write a simple program to do this which I will show you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.